Shalom Israel. This is your brother Lamar Lacan. And uh, before I get started, I first want to give all honor, praise, worship, esteem, adoration, admiration, reverence, exaltation. And I want to glorify the Most High, Yahweh. And Him only do I give praise and worship to. Today's lesson. I'm going to call it the clear versus the unclear. The clear versus the unclear. Um, this lesson is geared specifically for those who are on the fence. You're probably on the fence about the New Testament, about Christ of the New Testament. Or you may just be questioning things about whether you're properly honoring the Creator. And that's that's good, you know, to, to wonder, am I properly worshiping? You know, if that's important to you, then stick around. Maybe some things just don't seem right to you in general. What, I, what I'm about to bring out from the Holy Scriptures will show you things that the Most High clearly states. These scriptures really don't need to be expounded on. However, we do expound anyway, because some of you may be novice readers of the scriptures. Uh, so that we mainly expound on them just to spark your brain to think about what you're reading, not to twist anything. So if it's clear, it's clear. All right. So understand that the clearly spoken scriptures really don't need any clarification. The unclear holy scriptures are scriptures that need more investigation to know what or who those particular scriptures are referring to. These scriptures are usually taken way out of context or people use them to build false doctrines, to lure you in, to suck you into a belief. All right. Some of these scriptures or even entire chapters of unclear scriptures or unclear entire chapters can take some time to understand. All right, some of them are easy. You got to really dive in. There are a lot of wonderful lessons on these scriptures done, uh, even on YouTube. But anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and get started on this lesson. Um, first, beginning with uh, Isaiah 28. And uh, you may see some videos. Most of us who, uh, who've been awakened to the scriptures the scriptures speak to us and and we can we can clearly see what we're reading um a lot of us started out and we may have seen some of the, the camp videos you know for those of you who don't know who the camps are those are the guys uh who claim to be hebrew israelites on the street corners on on a, a lot of them are on street corners and uh but but they also teach the new testament as well and um, a lot of us come in because we've seen them speak on the curses of Deuteronomy 28. And I have a video on that if you've never seen it. Go to that Deuteronomy 28 video because that's how a lot of us wake up to the scriptures. We find out who we are through those scriptures. And once a lot of those camp, camp um, we call them the Christian lights, because they're Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites, but they're really Christians. Once we, we come in on, on Torah, which is Deuteronomy 28, uh, uh, the curses of Deuteronomy 28, they bring us in on the Torah, and then they take us straight to the New Testament to teach us that Christ was black. And it's, it's, it's strategically done, you know. So we're going to start at, at how that doctrine is, um, how doctrines come to be. And they lead us astray. So let's look at Isaiah 28. I'm going to start at verse 7. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. And, oh, excuse me. I'm going to start over. I'm reading out of the Blue Letter Bible. I am reading from the King James Version. Uh, so if you have your King James, open that up. If you want to read out of your own. And... Uh, and just and, and read, read, 
read along so you can see for yourself what we what we're going through. So once again, um, Isaiah twenty-eight, verse seven. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. See that? They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. So we got the, these people who are supposed to be men, men of God. I'm, I'm going to speak um, verbatim. I'm going to say God. I'm going to say the Lord today because... I'm expecting those who are on the fence, who really maybe not be strong in scripture to um, go with this. So I don't want to confuse them with the Hebrew words or the Hebrew names or anything. So the men of God, these priests and prophets, they make errors. All right. Through strong drink, they stumble in judgment. Look, verse eight, for all tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no place clean. They're spewing out garbage. In other words, you're not teaching the true word of God. You're coming out of church feeling good. You're coming away from a camp feeling all good and, and full of pride. But it's really vomit and filthiness that you're getting. Most High always talks about idol worship and how filthy it is and whoring. It's whoring yourself. All right? And we get that all throughout Scripture. Verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? It's talking about these priests and prophets. Who shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So the ones that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, you're a novice reader, and that's, that's okay. But you have to understand that these people right here, these priests and prophets, they err through knowledge, through their, they err through strong drink. They stumble in judgment. All right? Verse 10. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. So these precepts are these scriptures, these commandments, commandments upon commandments, lines upon lines, here a little and there a little. All right, so we have to get parts from the Bible. We get parts over here to build, all right? We build, we take a line over here and it matches up with a line over there. Or we take a scripture here, a commandment here, and match it with a commandment here. Verse 11, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. Verse 12, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. And this is the refreshing. Yet they would not hear. All right? So, we have the true men of the Most High. We're coming out. We're, we're telling you differently. We're trying to get you to really look at idol worship because those were the first things that came out of the Most High's mouth uh, when, uh, through his commandments to Moses that was written down. The first three is dealing with idol worship. I don't find that surprising at all that those are the first things he dealt with. So we're telling you, hey, you need to look at how you're worshiping. All right? Yet they would not hear. Verse 13. But the word of the Lord was unto them. Now watch this. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, look, that they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. See that? So precept upon precept, you can be spoken to, you can build, but you can also fall backward using the same technique and be broken and snared and taken. You can build a doctrine you can take Little Red Riding Hood or Three Little Pigs. You can take, yeah, Three Little Pigs, for instance. And if you didn't ever heard that story, somebody can make the, the wolf to be the hero. If they read it to you the way they want you to read, the way they wanted to read it, you know, to you. So you can be snared. 
using the same technique of precept upon precept. Verse 14, Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye, sc ye scornful men, that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. So all you people that that seem to hate the word of the Lord, oh, that's the old test. That's the old. That's very disrespectful to the Creator to call something his word is old when he said his word. His words are forever. His Torah is forever. It's the life. It's the wisdom. It's not old. That was specifically done to make you think his word is useless. Ye scornful men. All right. Verse fifteen. Because ye have said, look, when you when you do that, when you don't hear the word, because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. And with hell are we at agreement. You're agreeing to be in hell. You're agreeing to be in a hellish state, a hellish condition. You're agreeing to get tased and choked. Shot in the back with no weapon in your hands. You're agreeing you made a covenant with death. Because you're not hearing the words of the Lord. All right? You're being snared and taken. All right? Continuing. When the overflowing scourge sh shall pass through, it shall not come into us. For we have made lies our refuge. See, you settle in the lies. You're fine with the lie. You don't even question it. They told you Christ over there is the king. He going to do this and do that and do this and do that. And he's black and he's this. And you made that lie your refuge, your protection, your covering. And under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Verse 16. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation, he that believeth shall not make haste. I'm going to jump down. I want verse 26. Verse 26. For his God doth instruct him to discretion and doth teach him. All right. We get our instructions for God. And we're going to go through that today. We're going to look at the clear versus the unclear. Verse 29. This also coming forth from the Lord of hosts which is wonderful in counsel and excellent in working. So what we look at today, remember, this is the counsel of the Lord, and it's excellent. It's wonderful, all right? Now, let's look at some unclear scriptures. And these are scriptures that um, we'll see a lot of um, Christian lights, Christians, Christian lights, go to to justify their doctrine. All right. We're going to go to Micah 5. Micah 5. And we're going to start at verse 2. This is one of the scriptures they use to say this is prophesying the coming of the New Testament Christ. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. And see, when people read that, if, if you've never read, read it before or read scripture before, and someone who seems smarter than you, they seem like a man of God. They got the gaiters on, the gator shoes on, he got his nice suit on, he got his hair slick, whatever you... Whatever looks like a man of God to you, what you've been fooled into believing that's the way you're supposed to look. Those people come along and they'll say, see, right there, verse 2, that's talking about Christ. See, there he is right there. See, you see that word Bethlehem, right? But see, if you look up Ephrata, that was talked about, I believe that was back in uh, Chronicles. First Chronicles. There's a story behind this. And it has nothing to do with J.C. I'm not going to say his name, but Christ of the New Testament. It's not about him. If you study this, this is, this is not clear that it's talking about Christ of the New Testament. It's not clear, which means you have to investigate it. It doesn't say it's talking about Christ. 
Oh, you gotta have the spiritual eyes to see it, bro. You got to have the spiritual eyes, Octa. You don't have the, the spirit. Now, that has to be investigated. Yes, I know what it's talking about. I know who it's talking about. But that's not the purpose of the day. The day is not to teach who this is talking about. Because those are lessons in itself. The, the goal is to show you that this is a scripture that Christians and Christian lights will use to say, see, this is talking about Christ. And it's up to you from this point. I'm telling you, no, it isn't. Investigate it. Now it's up to you. That's up to you if you really are sincere in your journey. If you're not sincere, keep on idol worshiping. You're going to do that anyway. The most high said we're stiff-necked people, hard-headed people. You're not going to investigate it. You're comfortable in your lies like what we just read. You, you take refuge in the lies. Right? Let's look at another one that Christians and Christian lights run to to deceive you. We're going to Deuteronomy uh, 18. And actually there's um, two in here. They're pretty much close to the same. So Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me unto him ye shall hearken. And people see that capital P and they and it automatically He's raising up. They're going to listen to him. And it feels good to say that's Christ. See? But when you read and study, you'll see who it's talking about. If you're sincere in your journey. If you're not, go ahead with the lie. Go ahead. Verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth. And he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. See? They, they can tell you who that is. But you have to dive in. Alright? Now let's look at some clear scriptures. See, this is a journey. And when, and when you read across some things. And somebody twisted your brain to make you think something. A doctrine. Always, always, always lean on what the Most High clearly says. All right? He clearly says some things. We're going to look at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I'm going to start at verse 4. This is clear. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. I asked a guy one time. We were just having a conversation. And I heard him say, the Lord. And the Lord said this. And I'm like, Most I didn't say that. He was talking about some things Christ said. And I'm like, that's totally opposite of what the Most High said. So you calling him the Lord too, huh? So I asked, I said, hey man, how many... Lord's is there. He said, uh, two. I'm going to read this again. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. It don't say three rolled up into one because a lot of people like to say Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, this equal entity all rolled up. Uh, and then some, but they're there, but it's all for the glory of the most. I'm going to read this again. The Lord our God is one Lord. We, we're not discussing. No other entities. One. That's clear. Verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord. Remember this one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. See, y'all splitting y'all love. Y'all over here crying every week in church. Or hollering on his street corner about somebody else over in another testament somewhere. A testament about some fleshly, some fleshly man. See, we, we, y'all only, we not over here crying about Moses. We're grateful that the Most High used him to do what he did to deliver 
our ancestors from the hands of their enemies. He was, he was given a task to do something, but the Most High was clear about who actually did it. We'll get into that later. We'll get into that and, and, and actually coming right up, actually. But he said, love him, the Lord, thy God, with all thy heart. How can you love the Lord thy God when you, with all your heart, when you're crying every week to this, to this man? Yes, thank God. You know how y'all do. Y'all Sunday worshipers, you know, Saturday worshipers, y'all doing Saturday nights and Friday. Y'all know some of these churches are so big now they got three services or more. But every week, y'all thank God to somebody else. Crying. Yeah, I know what JC did for me. How you, how you know? How you know what the most high sparing you? All right? Nah, let's keep reading. Because I'm reading right here. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. All. All means all, not some. It don't mean split it up over here. You know what? Give some over here to the Holy Spirit. All that. No. Verse 6. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. He, he told us these words right here. We just read them. You're supposed to have this in your heart. Right here, verse 5. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Huh? Are you teaching your children to love the Lord thy God with all their heart and with all their soul and with all their might? Or are you telling them to praise JC? Verse 7 again. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto the, to thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. He tell them, tell them that all the time. Teach them that all the time. And they're coming and going. When you get up, you, before you go to bed, all that stuff. You're supposed to be letting them know who gets the glory. Who you loving with all your heart. If not, you're teaching them idolatry. All right? Now, uh, verse 13. Jump down to verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him. And shall swear by his name. See, the promises you make are supposed to be under the most high name. You're supposed to be serving the most high. Y'all over there serving JC. How can you love the, the most high with all your heart? Right here, verse 5. If you over here serving and giving praise, honor, glory, worship over there. Verse 14. You should not go after other gods of the gods of the people which are around about you. What god other gods are around you? The Most High said, I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of Israel. Children of the Most High God. I'm sorry. You all are going after gods of the people. Who are the gods of Negroes? I'm talking to you. Who are your gods? You got the um the type the, the the god of the Quran called Allah, which you know Allah is pretty much a title for God. Well he's his messenger is Muhammad. And and um he says, Your salvation, you gotta bow in front of this rock, that Kaaba stone. And that's the key to your salvation. Then Christians say, well, this cross and the guy that died on it, that's the key to your salvation. Well, right here, verse 13 tells us to serve the Lord thy God. They don't say nothing about a rock, a cross. They don't say nothing about Muhammad or JC. Right? Verse 15. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God. Oh, he's jealous when you serve those other gods, when you're bowing down to other stuff and kissing the cross and raising it and all that. He is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. Some of you making a covenant with death. See? You're making a covenant with death because the Creator is jealous. He only wants it to be about him only swearing by his name 
the promises you make by his name. All right? Verse 16. You shall not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massah. We're going to talk about that. Ye shall dil diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes which he commanded thee. And that's those of you who, who say JC died because you can't do this. You can't keep these things called commandments and statutes and testimony. You can't keep them. So you say he died for you. So when you eat all the pork till your blood is about to, your blood and heart about to pop. Call high blood pressure, high uh, blood, uh, what is it? Heart disease, strokes. You eating all the all the pork you want. I gotta eat me some pork. No, you don't have to eat pork. Not the Most High said, don't eat the swine. Don't eat it. It's a commandment, right? You're not supposed to eat it. it ain't a top ten commandment, but it's a commandment nonetheless. Well, J.C. said, he said something. Yeah, of course he said something opposite of the Most High God because he's not from God. Yeah, he told you. He told you it's not what goes in that's unclean. It's what comes out of you that's unclean. That's that's a lie. Most High told us what not to put in our mouths. He told us don't if you're going to eat something out of the waters, it's got to have skin, uh, what it scales. And fins, excuse me, scales and fins. He told us that. He says abomination. What goes in your mouth is unclean, according to the Most High. Who is JC to change that? You should diligently, that means work hard consistently, to keep the commandments of the Lord your God and his testimonies and his statutes, which he hath commanded thee. All right? That's what you're supposed to do. And, you know, I wasn't going to read this one, but why not? Verse 18. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. What's right and good? These. Right here. Verse 17. Keep the commandments. The testimony and statute. That's what's right and good. In the sight of the Lord. That it may be well with thee. And that thou mayest, mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. If you do this, you get your land back. He said, have no other gods before him. That's a commandment. Y'all crying and hollering over somebody else. Every week, you're on the corner hollering by Hashem. Every week, you put another name with the most high. All right? So, so. Once again, verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You keep saying two names. And some of you saying three. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Cut it out. This is clear. I don't know how many is one to you. Well, uh, actually, you be ready to argue with the word of God. I didn't say he's one Lord. The creator said he's one. What that means is, one means one. Well, <laughs> stiff neck people, boy, y'all a trip. It's clear. The Lord our God is one Lord. But y'all gonna make two and three out of them. Some of y'all probably make more. God is in you. You the God. You, the, you ain't created nothing. Cut it out. You haven't made an earth, people in it. You don't even know how you got here. Cut that out. All right, here we go. Let's go to, um, let's look at that. Because he said that they tempted him. The Most High said that he was tempted in Massa. So let's just look at that real quick. We're going to the book of Exodus, chapter 17. Exodus 17, all right? So... Uh, let's start at verse 4. 
And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They'd be almost ready to stone me. Because, see, they were thirsty. The children of Israel were in the wilderness, and they were thirsty. Very thirsty. So verse 5, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people, and take with thee of the elders of Israel and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest the river, taking thy hand, and go. He said, pick up that stick over there, that rock, that stick. All right? Verse 6, Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock. And so you're going to hit the rock. And there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. So he's at this mountain, Mount Horeb. That's a, the, the rock in Horeb. That's the mountain, Mount Horeb. And he hit it. In front of everyone, sight of the like, see that, and did so in the sight of the elders. Verse seven, and he called the name of this place Massah and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they tempted the Lord, saying, "Is the Lord among us or not?" So even though the Most High made all this water come out to feed all of them, I mean to to, to quench all of their thirst, they still questioned whether it was Him or not doing it people negroes so-called negro you do the same thing and you give glory to your savior when it's actually the creator doing everything he's the one providing you this grace and mercy and yet i know what i pray for God. no the most high had mercy on you most High does everything alone all right Let's look at that. Remember now, we're talking about the clear versus the unclear. Isaiah chapter 44. Isaiah chapter 44. Remember, you can always pause the video if I'm going too fast. We're going to start at verse, uh, verse 6. All right? Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer. See, he's the, the Lord is the King of Israel. He's also the Redeemer for Israel, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last and beside me there is no God. He says he's the first, he's the last. There's nothing before him, nothing after. He's everything, everlasting. And other than, he said, other than him, there is no God. Well, oh, uh, you know how y'all like, well, no, what that means is, <laughs> No, what it means is he's the first, he's the last, and other than him, there is no God. Beside me, there is no God. See? Just like you. Other than you, there is no you. Whoever's listening to this, there's no other you. You're the only you. Even if you're a twin, you're a triplet, uh, quadruplets, quintuplets, sextuplets, all of that, there's still only one you out of that group. Of those that may look like you, there's still only one you. He's telling us he's the first night, but other than him, there is no God. But y'all try to make this Elohim, this God, this equal, these equal entities. And it's not, it's not there. It's not happening. Let's look at verse 24. Isaiah chapter 44, verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, thy redeemer. And he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things. That stretcheth forth the heavens alone. That spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Y'all keep trying to make the creator like. Like give credit to these other entities. Nah. He said he tell us right there he did it by himself. Right. Isaiah 45 next chapter. Isaiah 45. Uh, starting at verse 5. I am the Lord, and there is none else. What that means is, <laughs> some of y'all try to spin anything. I'm going to read that again. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God beside me. Look at that. Other than me, beside, beside me, there is no God. 
I girded thee. That means he covered and protected you. Though thou hast not known me. And that's powerful because those of you who've given credit to JC over there, Christ in the New Testament, I know who I pray. I know who I, I know. I protected you even though you don't know anything about the creator because you don't know the book. Though thou hast not known me, I protected you. I covered you. I delivered you from that. I protected your parents, your kids. See that? I girded thee. Read that again, verse 5. I, I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Clear. Verse 6. They that may know from the rising of the sun, sure as the sun rises, and from the west, that's where the sun set, that there is none beside me. As sure as that, as sure as the sun comes up and goes down, as sure as that is, he's saying, be sure there is none other than him. No, there's the, are y'all ready to argue with God? I am the Lord and there is none else. What that means is, and what it means is he's the Lord and there's none else. Clear. Verse 7, I form the light and create darkness. He didn't say we form the light. He said, well, me and Moses, you such and such was there. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. He didn't say I make peace, but, you know, the devil, you know, he, he does the evil stuff. He didn't say that. He said, I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things, not some, all. He does all peace. He does all evil. He does all light. He does all darkness. It's all him. What that means is. <laughs> hard head. That's what it means. It mean. You are hard headed and don't accept the word of God. It's clear. And when you see those unclear scriptures like Micah 5 that we read. And Deuteronomy 18 that we read. When you see that unclear, the unclear has to be investigated. The clear, you lean and stand on it. That's the rock that you stand on. You stand on what's clear. All right? Uh, verse 13. Is that what I want? No, not verse 13. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 13. No, where am I? Isaiah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Verse 15. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. See that? He's a God that hides himself. I know God is here with me. Verily, thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. He's going to hide from you, which means you got to find him. And some of y'all not seeking. You just accepting whatever pastor say, whatever your camp leader says, whatever your mentor says, or your your moray. You just accept it. None of you have a brain of your own. I see some of y'all the lesson. Uh, somebody put up a lesson on YouTube, and and the and the lesson just went up, and you already commenting great lesson. You couldn't possibly have gone through that hour lesson that some people put up. And five minutes later, after we had a great lesson, Ock. Boy, some of you are just going to chill lead your way off a mountain. Chill lead and all kind of wrong. Verily thou art a God, God that hidest thyself. You're going to have to find the best hider in the world and out of the world. That's the God of Israel, the Savior. He calls himself the Savior. He didn't call Moses. He didn't call J.C. No, he says, God of Israel, the Savior. Verse 16. They shall be ashamed and also confounded. All of them. When all of you find out the truth, you're going to be ashamed of yourself. And those of you who heard it and been warned, you're going to be ashamed of yourself. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. Y'all run to your pastors, to your cap leaders. And you don't want to deal with this. You don't want to deal with what's clear. You run from it. You run to your maker or your idol. Verse 17. 
But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. There's one group of people that's going to be saved from all of this. Israel, we're the one. The Negroes are the ones that need to be saved. We're the ones getting stepped on. We can't lead a nation. Your last president that looked similar to you was not you, Negro. He wasn't a Negro. He's Kenyan. All right? Israel should be saved in the Lord with an everlasting, forever salvation. You should not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. I'm not ashamed. Verse 18, for thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain. It's not useless. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Look how many times most I keep telling us there's none else. And y'all want to argue that. Somebody going to listen to this. Well, see, what about this? And then you want to run to something that's not clear. You want to run to an unclear scripture when it's clear he keeps telling us there is none else. I am the Lord. There is none else. Well, the Lord over here said, he ain't the Lord. How about that? Because the Most High keeps telling us, he is the Lord, all caps, and there is none else. That's clear. And you want to take off to something unclear that somebody told you is JC. All right? Isaiah 44. No, I'm sorry, we went that, did that already. Isaiah, where we at? Isaiah 45, let's look at verse 20. Assemble yourselves and come. I'm talking to you, Negroes. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up the wood, there's your cross, of their graven image, and pray unto a God that cannot save, there's your JC. Bahashem, Bahashem, you Hebrew, Hebrew Christian lights. You pray unto a God that can't save you. He told us who the Savior is. He told us right here in 15, the Savior. But you run to a God that cannot save your wood, your wooden God. He died on a wooden stick. And that's who you pray to. Right? Verse 21. Tell ye and bring them near. Yeah, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. He says he's fair. He's balanced. And a Savior. There is none beside me. None. You still glorify others. Other things and other people. You still glorify. There's none beside me. Other than me, there is none. That's what he's saying. Isaiah 45 and 22. Look unto me and be ye saved. Who are you looking to to be saved? Most I just said look unto him. And be ye saved. All the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is none else. And he said it again. Verse 23. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Your idol over there in the New Testament said unto him, every knee was going to bow every tongue. Y'all, y'all are in idolatry, man. You are in, that's because God came in the flesh. God never said that. Cut it out. God never, there ain't no dust said the Lord, he coming in the flesh. God never said that. I don't care what Peter, Paul, Mark, Luke, John, whoever said. The word of God is thus said the Lord. See this first person, I, 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 thus said the Lord at the top. Thus said the Lord. These are words of God. So when we get down to verse 24, verse 24. Surely shall one say in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Your righteousness comes through the most high. Your strength comes through the most high. Even to him shall men come. 
And so if you want your wisdom and people to look to you and come to you, what 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 is the most high's word say? You gotta have the righteousness of the most high. And all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed. Verse 25. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. In the Lord. The children of Israel are going to have their justice and shall have their glory. I mean, you're going to rule, but it's going to come through the Lord, the most high only. All right. Let's go to some unclear. Let's go to Genesis chapter one. Genesis chapter one, verse 26. Unclear. And God said, let us make man in our image right there the christians and the christian lights see well no the christian lights don't really do that but they are um, no yes they do i take that back yes they do let us make man in our image yeah let us make man they say see that's jc right there it don't say that's jc i'm gonna read the whole thing and god said let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now we read God said he did everything alone. But we read right here and God said, let us make man in our image. See, who is that? You have to research it. It's not hard. I know who the us is. But let's see what actually happened. Who actually did this task? Let us make man in our image. So man is about to be made, right? Verse 27. Let's see what happens. So God created who? God created man in his own, his own image, singular. His own image. He didn't say, and they created man in their image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. He said he did everything alone. You either believe it or you don't. Now, if you want to know who was with him, research it. Don't mean that entity did it. Because we see God created man in his own image. All right? Let's go to Isaiah. Here's another one. It's unclear. That's why we have to lean on the clear. Verse 14, Christians and Christian lights. And, and shout out to the Christian lights who, um, in some of the camps, you all finally dropped this from using this as a, a testament to, for, to J, for JC over there. Shout out to you all. You're getting closer. You, you're running out of scriptures to lie about. And, and shout out to y'all, you know, for acknowledging that this is not talking about Christ of the New Testament. So Isaiah chapter 7 Verse 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. It's called his name Emmanuel. I know what some of you are. What? Hey, he don't have a spiritual. Man, I'm turning this off. <laughs> well, it's not talking about your idol over there in the New Testament. You're warned. Research it and see who it's talking about. You have to read the chapter. You even read the next chapter. But you got to read some. That right there doesn't fit the narrative of the context. Of what you're trying to make it. That, you know, that precept upon precept. That snare. Someone snared you. And, and you fell backwards from that snare. And now you're in idolatry. Because they told you that's prophesying the coming of Christ when... No, that's not what it is. And like I said, it's not. Today is not about going and teaching. It. It's to tell you. And now you can go in and actually learn the truth. If you dive in to the work. Because God is hiding his face from you. He's hiding. Remember, we just read that. Okay. So, where are we going now? Daniel 9. Daniel 9, verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city 
to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Mm -hmm. Right there. See? <laughs> Verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. Verse 26. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end of the war desolations are determined. See? I know that's what the Christian lights and the Christians say. See? Shout out to um, this young brother uh, I saw a few years ago. Just dismantle a camp of well-known camp leader. Tyreek Mouse. Shout out to you, bro. You, you really dismantled that doctrine um, uh, of this being prophesied about um, JC the brother the young brother was only 17 at the time and um, and it, that's just showed you man the most high he's gonna use who he's gonna use man and some of these young people really they they really know this word and, and some of you old cats you stiff neck hard head knucklehead know-it-alls you probably want to sit down with some of these young cats, man, and and hear it. They know they know this word, you know. Stop being scared, y'all. Are scared to uh, learn the truth. You being snared and taken. But Daniel nine is this Daniel nine is not talking about JC. It's not at all. So you have to dive in and see. You've been already warned and told. I'm warning you. It's not talking about your idol over there. The most higher does everything alone. He's alone. He's the savior. He's the king. All right? So if JC is the king of kings, he's literally saying he's the king of the most high because the most high, we read it. He said he's the king. We read that. All right? So let's go to uh, Isaiah 9. This is another unclear. It's not clear. It don't say it. What we just read didn't say it's talking about JC. Verse 6. Christians and Christian lights run right to this. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. See? That's because a doctrine has been spun on you. Someone told you that that's talking about the New Testament Christ, and you just accepted it. You didn't do any research. You didn't see. And, and, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government wasn't upon J.C.'s shoulder. He wasn't royalty. He wasn't a king, a ruler. He didn't rule over no, no people. The government wasn't on his shoulder. But like I said, it's not about teaching you that right now. This is about you being diligent in your research. So that you can worship the Most High because he's a jealous God. We read that. He hates idol worship and, and, and you're in idolatry, people. All right. Verse 15, same chapter. Isaiah 9, verse 15 and 16. The ancient and honorable, he is the head and the prophet that teacheth lies. He is the tail. See? The ancient and honorable. See, we came, those of us we over here in what y'all call the Old Testament. Y'all call it, it's, it's ancient, but it's honorable. It might be older than your New Testament, but it's honorable. He is the head. The Most High is the ancient of days. He is the head. And the prophet that teaches lies, he's the tail. He's last. Last in the eyes of the Most High. Verse 16. For the leaders, your leaders, your camp leaders, you pastors and deacons and everybody else, for the leaders of this people cause them to err. Them the ones that got y'all screwed up. And they that are led of them are destroyed. They're not showing you the truth. They're not telling you that there are clear scriptures that the Most High says 
that is him and only him, that he's alone, that beside him there is no savior, beside him there is no other God. They're not teaching you that. They're leading you to be destroyed. They're taking you to scriptures that are unclear and destroying you. The ancient and honorable was the head. Y'all run into the new. Y'all run into the last, the tail. Y'all going to the back. To those so-called products that's teaching the lies. That's the tail. The ancient is the head. All right. Jeremiah chapter 10. Let's let's finish um expounding. Let's expounding on what the most high is telling us. Jeremiah chapter 10, starting at verse 10. We're going to read 10 and 11. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God. See, the Most High never died. He never, he never smelled the stink of death. All right? He's the living God and an everlasting king. See, your JC over there, he was dead for a while. So while he was gone, was he, he wasn't no king or nothing. He was dead. See, my, the true living God is everlasting forever. Ain't no, no, there's no break in his, in his life. There's no, no start date and end date, start and end, start and end. It ain't none of that. He's everlasting. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble and the nation shall not be able to abide his indignation. But see, some of y'all believe that, that the most high is wrath. You got to, uh, uh, when, the, when, when the Most High shakes the earth, J.C. going to save all these nations. When the Most High said the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. His hatred, his indignation is his hatred, his anger. They're not going to be able to live in his anger. They're not going to be able to tolerate it. See that? Verse 11. Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and earth, <laughs> the gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth. J.C. didn't make the heavens or the earth. All right? Buddha did not make the heavens and the earth. All your gods, your wood and your stone gods, they shall perish from the earth. And, f and from under these heavens, they're not going to last. The Most High is going to get rid of your idols. All right? Let's go to Jeremiah 3. I'm teaching you the truth, showing you the truth. Jeremiah 3, verse 22. This is what you have to do right here. Return. Right? No, nah, let's look at 21. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. See, y'all over here crying over your New Testament God. You forgot about the ancient. You forgot about him. Verse 22, return. You say you forgot about the Lord. Return, ye backsliding children. And I will heal your backslidings. Oh, y'all see JC do all the healing and the forgiveness. All you got to do is come back to the Most High. He said here, heal your backsliding. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. All right? Let's go to a clear. Another clear. Boy, this is clear what we got to look at. Isaiah 46. Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. Remember the former things of old. There's your ancient again. For I am God, and there is none else. Wait a minute. Uh, there's also, no, I'm going to read that again. For I am God, and there is none else. What about the, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Wait a minute. Christ is like I am God, and there is none like me. That's clear. Why y'all run into the unclear, trying to make someone like God? There's none like 
God. None. Well, there is one that like, there is none like God. Verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done. Saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. All right. So that's clear. That verse nine, we look at. Remember the form of things are old for I am God and there is none else. Who are you to argue with that? Well, <laughs> I've seen people do that. Well, who are you get ready to argue with? I am God and there's none else. Well, are you about to make something else, huh? I am God and there's none like me. Well, are you about to make somebody like God? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Mm, stiff neck. Boy. Let's go to Isaiah 43. I know some of you probably knew. Some of you who are a little more well-versed knew I was coming here. You know what, Isaiah 43, do I want to, and here's what I love, you know, see, you won't get these words in the New Testament, look at verse 1 real quick, but now thus saith the Lord, see that, thus saith the Lord, then we jump down, I just want you, want you to see that, thus saith the Lord, that's important, look at verse 10, ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, the most high God is talking, these are his words. When he gets to verse 11, he's still talking. He says, I, even I. That's like saying, I, yeah, me. I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me, there is no Savior. I, yeah, me, am the Lord. He's telling you who he is. And other than me, there is no Savior. Well, you know how y'all do. Well, I don't know. I... I'm going to read that again. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me, other than me, there is zero Savior. Well, I know you're hard-headed. Just say it. Just say it. You're hard-headed. Just say it. <sighs> you going to believe what you going to believe. I'm going to believe right here. Look, I am... Even I am the Lord, and beside him there is no Savior. Other than the Most High, there is no Savior. You trying to change my belief system. I even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Read it a thousand times, two thousand, five thousand times until you snap out of the sleep that you're in, Christian lights. Yeah, you all with the outfits on on the corner or, or, or the T-shirts, whatever you wear. But y'all out there by Hashem and leading our people to air, causing them to air, and we have a jealous God. Don't y'all want to get out of this, man? Don't y'all want to come out of this idolatry? Shout out to some of you camps who finally speaking against the words of Paul. You finally. But the only thing is, I see you all. I'm watching you. Some of you all still using Paul when it helps your doctrine. But you run from Paul when one of them Christians come against y'all and Paul says something that go against your doctrine. That's, that's, man, that's, <laughs> y'all a trip, man. You, you go against Paul when it's convenient. You use, you use Paul when it's convenient. Y'all fence riding like a mug. Fence riding. Shout out to the camps that, that recognize that nothing Paul said is thus saith the Lord. One problem, no camp. Nothing in the New Testament is thus saith the Lord, except the stuff that um that they quoted, that they hijacked from the New Testament. But thus saith the Lord, the words thus saith the Lord, not there. They just use some truth from over here to help smother the lot some of the lies to get people feeling warm and fuzzy they took some of our our books some of our uh that the most high gave us in our books took it over to those books to trick and deceive to cause our people to err 
All right? So that's clear. Verse 11. I even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. That's clear. All right? You don't have to run to nothing unclear. You don't have to run to Micah 5. You don't have to run to Deuteronomy 18. You don't have to run to Isaiah 7 and 14 to, 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 to justify nothing. The Most High keeps telling us over and over again, it's just him. It's just him. It's just him. Well, ain't no well, man. Well, you're hard-headed. That's what it is. I'm sorry. We're going to um, watch this. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20. All right? Chapter 20. Verse 1. And God spake. Words you don't see in the New Testament. All these words saying. Let's see what the creator is going to say. Verse 2. I am the Lord thy God. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. God says he brought us. Brought our, our ancestors out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. He didn't say, I am the Lord thy God. Oh, and and uh, this is Moses, y'all, by the way. He one brought. He says, He, he says who he is and what he did. Right there. And the first commandment came out of his mouth, thou shalt have no other gods before me. So you ain't supposed to be bowing down, praising, worship, all that reverence, high esteem. That highest regard and crying over no flesh, no objects, none of that. No other gods in front of the Most High, between you and the Most High. Don't push nobody. No in the name of, no Bahashem, none of that. Don't put that between you and your Creator. It's simple. Verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Because y'all steady got these pictures. Y'all got these pictures on the corner. Y'all graven images. Y'all got these objects that y'all exalt. Look, continue. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Y'all got the Jesus fish on your cars and clouds, all this stuff. Or that is in the earth beneath. Or that is in the water under the earth. Y'all got all kind of objects and images and pictures. Statues. All kinds of crap. Because that's what it is to the most high. Crap. Verse 5. And I wasn't going to read all this. These are gems. These are commandments. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Y'all giving all this esteem to a New Testament God. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. He it's him, him, him. Visiting the iniquity, that's the wickedness, of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. You hate the Most High, don't you? Every time I, I know, I know, I read these scriptures. I read this Isaiah, the Jeremiah, uh, and, and I'm showing you. I, Isaiah 44 and 45, Isaiah 43. I'm reading this. He's alone. The Most High is alone, alone, alone. And you steadily arguing with God. That's like hatred. You steadily saying, well, there's two lords. There's three rolled into one. What it means is, and you're spinning, you're lying on the most high. Somebody's going to hear this word, though. Somebody's going to hear this word. Somebody. All right, let's go to um, Deuteronomy chapter 5. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 6. I stood between the Lord and you at that time to show you the word of the Lord. For ye were afraid by reason of the fire, and went not up on the mount, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. That's verse 6 right there. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. That's what I wanted right there. That's once again the Most High telling us, He brought us out of the house of bondage. He says it over and over again. I am the Lord that God which brought thee out of land of Egypt. That's for those who who um, say the, um, J.C. back in Deuteronomy 18, liken unto Moses. We don't see Moses getting all this credit for leading people out of Egypt. This is the most high saying, I, I did it. I did it. I brought you out of Egypt. Exodus chapter 7.
Israel does not consider, you do not consider who your master is. Exodus chapter 7, verse 5. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. So he said, when I free my people, Israel, Egypt going to know because I'm going to kick their butts. See that? The Most High saying, when I stretch forth my hand, he's doing it. Leviticus 22. Verse 33, Leviticus chapter 22, verse 33. That brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord. Who brought, who brought the ancestors out of Egypt? The Most High. He did it. We'll see him giving credit nowhere else. He gets all the glory and the credit. Who you crying over? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 5. We're going to look at verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 15. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Well, we're going back right here. Remember, thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out. He didn't say thou wast a servant and Moses brought thee out. We not. We, we over here who are most high only. We praise the creator only. We're not over here crying over Moses. We honor our ancestor Moses. We honor him for what he done. He was he was obedient and he did this task. He allowed, he, well, the Most High is going to use, you better do what the Most High tell you to do or you're going to die. Period. But the Most High gets the credit. We keep saying he brought us out of, uh, out of the land of Egypt. All right. Let's go to um, 1 Samuel chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 18. And said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel. You'll see those words in the New Testament. I brought up Israel out of Egypt. Who did that? Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel. I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all kingdoms and of them that oppressed you. See, that's what salvation is about. You being free from your oppression. So-called Negroes, are you free from your oppression? Has the Most High brought you up out of you, out of this yet? Maybe you need to cry to him and him only. Like, like the ancestors. Every captivity. Right? This is the one captivity where the Most High brought the children of Israel out. And he used Moses. He used Moses, but it's the Most High that did it. And, let, and they started, they learned about the Most High God as they went on. All the other captivities, we read about them crying out to the Most High and the Most High only. They dropped all their idols. He came back to the Most High and he freed them. You are still oppressed. That's slavery. The only way to do that, look. Thus saith the Lord, I brought up Israel out of Egypt and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all kingdoms and of them that oppressed you. So if you're under oppression and you haven't been delivered yet, you haven't cried out to your most high God yet. You doing in the name of and you and you um Hebrew Christian lights. Y'all Ba Hashem. Ba Hashem for those who don't know is is uh the Hebrew way of saying in the name of or by way of, and then they they gave Christ a, a Hebrew name. They pieced together a name, All right? So here we go. We're gonna keep it moving. Micah six. Micah six, verse four. For I brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, and redeemed thee 
out of the house of service. And I sent before thee Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. We know the Most High did that. Right? Look at verse 2 right here. Hear ye, O mountains, the Lord's controversy, and ye strong foundations of the earth. For the Lord, Lord hath a controversy with his people, and he will plead with Israel. So we talked about the Most High that brought thee out of the land of Egypt and redeemed. He's the redeemer out of the house of servants. He got them salvation. Y'all think salvation is dying and flying around heaven with wings. No Negroes. Your salvation is being free from your oppressor. That's all you're going to ever read about from the Most High. Not flying around with wings on. It's being redeemed from servitude of your enemies that the Most High put on you. The Most High put these enemies over you. Remember, he makes peace and creates evil. He's responsible for that. So he's responsible when your enemies is kicking your butt, choking you out, tasing you to death, blaming you for things you, you didn't do, or, or charging you uh, with crimes you didn't do, or punishing you beyond the punishment for a crime. Those are your enemies that the Most High sent. So you have to return, old backsliding children, to the one who's responsible for creating this evil that's been slapped on you for your disobedience. All right, Jeremiah chapter 23. Verse 7. Therefore, behold, the days come. That means a future prophecy. Saith the Lord, the Most High is speaking, that they shall no more say, the Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. See, the day is going to come when we won't have to keep saying this is the Most High Creator. He's the one who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. We won't have to say that no more. Watch this. Verse 8. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country. See, Negroes, you, you're in the north country. And from all countries, see, you're scattered around the world as well. Whether I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. See, right now, you don't have your own land no matter where you go. No matter where you believe the land is, whether you believe that that, that Israel over there is truly Israel and Whatever it is, it's not yours. It was snatched from you, taken from you. So when the Most High does this in verse 8, you're gonna, it's going to be your own land at that point. Whether you like me and, and, and believe the land to be here, over here in the, um, in, in, over in the western part of the United States, America, that is, or whether you believe it, no matter where you believe it is, it's not, none of it's ours, but it's going to be the remnant that makes it out alive. So we won't have to talk about that anymore. This is going to be the Lord. He's going to deliver his people from the north country and from all the countries, not just Egypt, from all around the world. All right? And we'll be able to dwell safely in our own land. All right? Let's look at this. Psalm 148. Psalms 148, verse 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. See that? Praise the name of the Lord. Who are you crying over every Sunday, or every week? Who are you crying over? Praising, yes, uh, yes, and waving, you. yes. You know how y'all do every, y'all don't know this book at all. Won't read it. Don't care. I know who did this for me. No, you don't. The creator girded you and protected you even when you didn't know him. He knew you were hard-headed, but your grace going to run out. Like any grace period. Like any contract. Especially when you've been warned. Those scriptures that you're trying to use to justify your idol... They're not clear scriptures. You have to investigate them. Yeah, I will come back and do some lessons in my time, but I'm dealing with this captivity too. And I don't have a schedule like that. 
So when I get to it, I get to it. But there, you have to research too. They, they're in here. There's some wonderful, excellent teachings. Shout out to Yahweh only. That's that's the people who worship the Creator alone. Shout out to you all who doing the work, putting in the work. And we and we're getting it done. We get we're gonna get that remedy. Let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is excellent. But some of y'all got to put another name next to the most high. Like his name can't stand alone. I pray in the name of. Yes. You know, all that crap. His name. Don't you know the creator's name alone is excellent? His glory is above the earth and heaven. Some of us use the name Yahweh, the Hebrew name Yahweh. And those of us who've done some deep studying. Some say Yahuwah. Some say Yehovah. We know what the letters are, the Hebrew letters are. We agree that those are the Hebrew letters. What our pronunciations are all. We even have some that say Yahweh. Yehovah, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Yahweh, Yehovah, Yahavah. Yeah, yeah. You got some ones that say Jehovah, which there was no just sound in Hebrew. But the Most High's name alone is excellent. Why do you all feel the need to say in the name of? And then say another name. His glory is above the earth and heaven, yet you're glorifying other images and other people. All right? Now, I am, let's go to Psalms chapter 40. I'm going to, I'm going to discuss this one a little bit because it's, it's pretty quick. All right? Psalms chapter 40. This is an unclear, uh, unclear word that we're going to get. And it's from a psalm that... Uh, it's from a psalm, and it's used also that uh, by idolaters who try to justify J.C., the Christ of the New Testament. And that's verse 7. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. And they say, See? Who is that? Who is that? Well, one thing it doesn't say, it doesn't say it's J.C. It doesn't go, come on, Ock. Come on. Who came in the volume of the book? Okay, real quick, let's look at the context. Psalms 40 and 1. To the chief musician, a psalm of David. So this is David's writings. This is his psalm. A psalm is a poem or a song that, he, that he's writing. He goes on, David, he says, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. David goes on. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. All right? Verse 3, And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear and trust in the Lord. He goes on. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respected not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. See, I turned away from the lies. I made I, I made the Lord my trust, like David. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and he can still do them. And thy thoughts, which are to us were, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee, if I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. He does more than we can see, than we can witness. Verse 6, sacrifice, look, sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. My ears have thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering thou hast not required. Now, I'm going to look at, real quick, I'm going to look at, go to 1 Samuel. We're going to come back to this, um, David, this Psalm 40. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Watch this. Verse 2. The reason why he said the sacrifice he thus uh, thou did not require, because in verse 2 right here, thus saith the Lord of hosts. I'm sorry, verse 22. But we, we still dealing with thus saith the Lord. Verse 22. From the prophet Samuel. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. And the Most High told us that. 
He told us that before. Hold on one sec. One second. Hold on, give me one second. Behold, OB. What am I looking for? I'm trying to remember that word. Jeremiah. One second. Okay, I can't get that right now. I can't get it. But yeah, right here. To obey the most high. We'd rather have you be obedient to follow his laws than the sacrifice. Obeying is better than that. Alright? So let's go back to um Psalms chapter 40. Then said I, then said who, who was talking? This is David. Low, low means look, like check it out. Then said I, look, check it out. I come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. This was David speaking. He's, he was speaking from the top. Y'all made that about an item. He goes on in verse 8. I, that's David, delight to do thy will. Oh my God. Yeah, thy law is within my heart. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, check it out. I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. And he goes on. He goes on. This was David talking. This is David saying he comes in the volume of the book. Right. He delights to do the will of God. This is David speaking. David wrote this. So, people have allowed their pastors or their leaders to come and say, see, that's talking about JC. And they don't say that's talking about JC. It, uh, it's not even in the context of, of the writer. All right? So now, let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 7. Verse 22. Wherefore, thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee. Well, uh, well, bro, I don't know. Read that again. Wherefore, thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee. Neither is there any God beside thee. Beside thee. According to all that we have heard with our ears, we heard it over and over and over again. There is none beside the Most High. None other than the Most High. None like the Most High. I don't know, bro. Verse 22. Read it out loud to yourself. Okay. Hopefully you read that out loud to yourself so you can hear your own voice. All right? Genesis. I oh, know I already did that, Genesis 1 and 26. Let's go to Malachi 3. And we're going to close out. Out of everything, everything that we just read, most High said he's alone. There's none other than him, none beside him. He's the redeemer. He's savior. He's the deliverer. Return to him. We, we can close out right here, Malachi 3 and 6. He's telling us again who he is, for I am the Lord. I change not. For those of you who think the Most High changed and he's not one Lord anymore, or he's not alone at He's got others that, that deserve being revered and adored. He says right here, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You don't have to rack your brain, Negroes. Ye sons of Jacob. You all are the sons of Jacob, so-called black men and women. You don't have to consume yourself racking your brain. 
trying to figure out, well, does he have, is it three? For I am the Lord, I change not. He doesn't change. Whatever he, we read, thus saith the Lord, it stands. And so I pray, it's my prayer, that somebody, somebody returns from the backsliding, comes back to the Most High God only. Try something different for once in your life. Try the Most High. Seek His face because He's hiding from you. He's hiding from us. So you got to seek His face. Come out of your idolatry. If you, uh, Those of you who aren't afraid to learn this side of the table, hit me up. I'm on Instagram, Lamar Lacan, and um, I'll get back with you. I'm not, not debating with nobody. You, you, you're going to idol worship. You're going to idol worship. That's on you. So don't come to me with none of that crap. Those of you who are on the fence and just need, you know, more clarity, hit me up. More, I'm Lamar Lacan on Instagram. And until next time, Shalom.